Welcome to the studios of All American Show Productions on a Monday, Thursday. I'm beautiful Bradley Bolton, getting ready for a big weekend. It's been a big week in show business, and uh, we've got a big, just big lots of everything in front of us. And, uh, you know, I, I understand that a lot of people out there on Facebook, they're embarrassed for me right now because I'm uh, new at this. This is all part of a professional development that I'm engaged in and it's not professionally developed yet. But right now you're probably especially embarrassed for me because of my hair. Now, we've already gone over the hair. The hair is all part of a character and the character is someone worth emulating and by that I mean I have modeled my hair after none other than Don Curtis. Now, why would that be? Well, I've, as I explained earlier in my previous episode, Don Curtis is simply a hero to the city of Jacksonville. And in order to get my hair in proper shape for showtime, I'm going to have to develop some volume. Now, in order to develop some volume, you kind of got to let your hair just do its thing for a while. Now, as I'm trying, I am in pursuit of a picture-perfect black flat top, and I'm building some volume, and as you can see, some things are getting a little cray. Well, there are certain times when your hair no longer looks like Don Curtis or anything like it. No, you begin to look like Dear Leader. I mean, seriously. This hair is a little crazy. It's two weeks overdue for a groom. I've got to get into the barber shop on Saturday morning. And I will, because I'm not going to our Resurrection Sunday service at church looking like this. But really, honestly, as I look at the, at the hair overall and the character I'm trying to pull off is somebody who I want to draw heat you know, I, I, I really want beautiful Bradley Bolton, though he may be the most beloved commissioner in all of independent pro wrestling. You know, I do want him to draw some heat. And really, I think that with this hairdo, I mean, I, I, I could pull it off with some, with some uh, black dye and some careful grooming at KJ's Cuts. I think I could do a pretty good, a pretty impressive, a pretty believable Kim Jong-un. And why in the world am I attempting to do anything with my hair? I mean, what's the big deal? I mean, I mentioned that my hair is uh, something that I do as part of a character, as part of a show. So if I'm getting my hair together, well, quite naturally there must be a show coming up. And there certainly is. As of today, I'm very proud to say that All American Show Productions has acquired a vendor space at the River City WrestleCon on Saturday, June 29th at the Jacksonville Fairgrounds. Now, this is going to be a huge event, and it's a very big deal to be a part of it. And <laughs> this show is going to be pretty big, and Honestly, it's one of those things that if you're a pro, old school pro wrestling fan in North Florida, you really want to be there. There are going to be a lot of huge names from the world of professional wrestling. Let's start with Mr. Rocky Johnson. Who doesn't want to meet Rocky Johnson and just shake his hand and just, I mean, I, I, I saw Rocky Johnson in the Jacksonville Coliseum, just about 100 yards from where I'm going to be on Saturday June 29th, where Don Curtis used to go to work every day. I'm going to shake Rocky Johnson's hand. There's going to be Jake the Snake Roberts. There's going to be Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. There's going to be B. Brian Blair, Arn Anderson, Tully Blanchard, Scott Hall, Kevin Nash, John Crowther, Vicky Guerrero, Billy Gunn, Leva Bates, Teddy Long, Teddy Long. And Sonny, the California girl. Now, you don't know who Sonny, the California girl is, but if you do a little Google search, you'll find out that she is somehow related, uh, subject-wise, 
to seriously one of the greatest rock and roll bands that the world has ever known who was recently in Jacksonville, Florida and Ooh, look at that. Kim Jong-un. We don't want him. Let's get rid of him. Okay, yeah. See, that's live. That's the live show. See, I could have recorded all this. I could have edited all that out. You know, well, what's the fun in that? The only reason why you're watching this is because it's Thursday night. You're bored. and You want to see what's going on live down in the ghetto. Well, this is it. And I'm wearing this awesome t-shirt here because last Friday night, I saw the greatest rock and roll concert that I've ever seen in my life, by far. And every time I've been to a KISS concert over the years, first became a fan in 1974 when I saw him on the Mike Douglas show with Tony Field out at Gene. Oh, I was there. And uh, anyway, I've seen him a lot over the years and every time I go there expecting a huge show and they always deliver. Um, they always exceed my expectations and that's because they start out every show with you wanted the best you got the best the hottest band in the world kiss and really honestly you're there because you wanted the best you got and 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 you're about to see that you got the best and they exceeded they far exceeded uh, your expectations uh, each and every show well I can tell you this um, I'm not trying to sell anything but Kiss on their end of the road tour. That was the most over the top rock and roll performance I've ever seen in my life. And I'm talking from the perspective of a commercial lighting nerd. I've done a lot of stage lighting. I've done a lot of broadcast lighting. I've done a lot of theatrical lighting. I have done schools, prisons, hospitals. I've done it all. Stadiums. Over the course of my 33 years in the business, I have done just about every kind of lighting you can imagine. I've even lit the interior of nuclear-powered submarines. And what I saw last Friday night was by far the most incredible light show that I've ever seen in my life, the most incredible stage production that I've ever seen in my life, and I'm sitting up in the cheap seats and I'm going, I'm hoping that somebody is going to do a documentary just on the production of this show alone. And when I got home, silly me, I went to their website and I found out that for a mere $6,500 each, anyone who acts in time can have the ultimate KISS Army VIP experience that will show you things that no KISS fan has ever seen before things backstage, personal meet and greet, you just need to go to their website and check it out. The ultimate KISS Army VIP experience. And I looked at that and I realized that I was going to see if I were to go on that tour, the nuts and bolts of the production of that show. And so I just immediately contacted Gene Simmons' agent and ask them that if I came up with $6,500 times two, could I possibly, as a young film school student, shoot video with one of my superlative cameras and create a documentary on show production. And of course, I'm saying this out loud because to all the world, because I hope that KISS is already doing that with cameras far better than me ones that I've got and doing it with people that have got a lot more training than I do but when I sent that out the next day I immediately regretted it because I'm gonna have to sell a lot of stuff to be able to put up the money if they call my bluff you know and quite frankly Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley they always pull for the underdog it's part of who they are and there is no telling I could get contacted any day and I might have to put up and if I have to put up, hmm, chance I'll be asked what are my credentials. And I really don't have any. I've done a pro wrestling show. I've done a comedy show that was actually a funeral for my best friend. And I've done a funeral itself. I've done some travel videos while I was on my honeymoon. Hmm, done some underwater video, in fact. 
but I really don't have an education in uh, s digital cinematography. I don't have a huge uh, resume that includes that. And so if I were asked what are my credentials, I really wouldn't have many. The only thing that I could say is it's not what I know, it's who I know. So that means that all American show productions would have to hire a cameraman for such a show, such a production, such a video documentary, and I happen to know one, uh, but it would double the cost of this production. And you know, even at double the cost, what I would get out of it, what the world would get out of it, um, it would be totally worth the investment. I mean, it would probably, um, most definitely, uh, ensure the financial security of my family for the rest of my life and beyond. I mean, what KISS fan would not want to see the nuts and bolts of what goes into producing the greatest rock and roll show you can possibly hope to see? And <laughs> after last Friday night, they went to Birmingham, Alabama on Saturday night and back to New York City for a wonderful Passover holiday, which I certainly hope they have. And um, then it's on to Mexico City, Mexico. Now... <laughs> Can you imagine a Mexican Kiss concert? I mean, they've already got the makeup going on with uh, Dia de los Muertos, but then you put all that together, all that Aztec culture, all that theater, you put that in an arena in Mexico City with Kiss? My God. I mean, over the years, we've always heard about the Japanese fans, but really, honestly, I hope on this tour they're taking plenty of video down in Mexico City. I really want to see that. In fact, it almost be worth it flying down there to see myself. That's going to be a crazy show. They're coming back to the United States. In uh, August, they'll be in Charleston, South Carolina. And in September, they'll be in San Antonio, Texas. And if I've heard from them by then, I'm going to be spending a lot of cash producing a documentary that the entire world will want to see. It will inspire a lot of people who want to get into show production. And that's really my purpose. I mean, it would be the greatest show ever. But really, considering that my credentials are lacking, just the mere thought that I could actually be taken up on such an offer has caused me to pursue an education in cinematography. And in fact, I'm talking to two colleges right now about going to film school. I'm 54 years old, and honestly, um, I've got a passion for this that can only be explained by the fact that maybe this is what I've been supposed to be doing with my life. So don't mind getting an education in it because in fact I've been called by the Holy Spirit to engage in media ministry and I really need to have the best education that I can get in that subject if I'm to be as effective with this tool that I've been given that I possibly can be. So. Thank you, Kiss, for a wonderful show. Thank you, Kiss, for a lifetime of great memories. And thank you, Kiss, for some inspiration, man. And please, Gene, Paul, get your agent to contact me. Madbrad325 at gmail.com. I'm the underdog. I'm the ultimate underdog. If I can't get in on the tour, at least let me get in on an interview. I really want to... Uh, collect your philosophy on show production, but honestly, having seen it for myself, <laughs> pictures paint a thousand words, and I've seen over a million pictures. What you do speaks for itself as far as show production goes, and if you really want to see the greatest rock and roll show that you've ever seen in your life, just go and find out where KISS is going to be playing in the United States next during their end of the road tour. It's worth seeing, way worth seeing. So anyway, so as I went to the show last Friday night, I was with a number of fans, or well, <laughs> a number of people who have heard about KISS over the years, but have never been to a KISS concert ever in their life. And they were, of course, blown away by it. And after the show, we got to talking about it a little bit, and the ladies who were in attendance said, you know, I could have really done without all that blood. 
I mean, Gene Simmons does what Gene Simmons does. I mean, he was out there being everything that his fans needed him to be for the last time that they ever see him live. But the ladies, you know, after 45 years of doing this, Gene Simmons still has the power to create shock and awe. They just were not ready for what it is that the man does. And, you know, I had to call him out on it. I'm going, you know, y'all sing in the choir at uh, North Jacksonville Baptist Church on Sundays, and you sing about the blood all the time, and you don't have a problem with that. And here this nice Jewish boy from New York City is. Get, you know, he's here in Jacksonville. Passover's coming up. Passover's all about the blood, and here he is giving you his best before he goes home to New York City to celebrate the high holiday. Now, I think you really need to examine yourself if you've got a problem with Gene Simmons and all that fake blood coming out of his face. Because, I mean, seriously, you know, it's a show. He's a character. Get loose. But it's quite understandable because Gene Simmons goes out of his way to uh, provide shock and awe in every show. And that's exactly what he does. That's exactly what he did last Friday night. And I just can't tell you enough. Go look it up. Find out where he's going to be playing near you, where Kiss is going to be, where the end of the road tour is going to be, and go see it. It's uh, truly Americana, man. You got to see this thing. It's crazy. So let's get to the real deal. This is Holy Week. And I started out Monday in tears because I watched the Cathedral of Notre Dame burn. Now, it was, it was painful for me to watch. Um, I think it was painful for anybody to watch who understands what's going on with that. I mean, it was one of those places that I always wanted to see, and I was watching it burn. And I'm going, I'm never, ever going to set foot in that cathedral. And that really, I mean, it was like a punch in the gut. And I cried. I wasn't the only one. And then the next day we saw an entirely different photo. And uh, as is the case in any disaster, I immediately saw the hand of God. I mean, who doesn't know that gold melts at low heat? And everybody saw that fire. That was pretty hot. And the first pictures the world sees from inside one of the greatest places of worship that was ever built is the cross. And you know, that really wasn't, I mean, I just immediately saw that in the midst of this, there was God's hand. And really, when you look at the whole thing, all the artwork removed, um, the statues of the twelve apostles removed from the roof before the renovation began. All that, all that happened, and then that incredible Catholic priest, who is the chaplain for the Paris Fire Brigade, who just ran into the flames and got the Holy Sacrament out of there, got the crown of thorns out of there. The number of people who rose to the occasion of what was what looked like to the world to be an incredible, huge disaster. The hand of God was there. And the French people rallied on the scene. I mean, they saved most of what was in there. Um, and if you look at any of the videos from inside the church and to see those stained glass windows still intact after that intense heat, you can't help but know that the hand of God was there. And now you look at how people from around the world, and I'll guarantee you there's plenty of atheists involved, who are going to donate money to the rebuilding, uh, the, re the, the renovation actually, 
of uh, the Cathedral at Notre Dame. I mean, it's incredible. People are going to come together to revitalize a house of worship in Europe. Most of the huge, incredible houses of worship in Europe have long ago become museums. But because of a fire, we now have a rallying point for the French people. We have a rallying point for the Catholic Church, who has suffered so much because of issues within the church, um, that the average Catholic had nothing to do with, and now there's a rallying point. There's a rallying point for many businessmen around the world, both in France and around the world, to try to do something to help restore this great work People would call it a work of art, but it's actually an act of worship. I mean, it took 200 years to build that. How dedicated do you have to be to your faith to know that what you're spending your life doing is something that will not be completed in your lifetime, but ultimately is to give glory to God and to inspire people who you will never know to come to know Him and come to worship Him. And now, once again, after so many years, uh, people all across Europe and all across the world are rallying to restore this incredible house of worship. But honestly, when I saw that golden cross just there and the, and the, the fact that we still had stained glass windows in that cathedral, I thought about uh, something I read in the news recently from a far less glamorous place of worship is in the state of West Virginia. This uh, church in, in West Virginia burned burned to the ground. Uh, not totally to the ground, but it was totally destroyed, okay? And there was a wooden cross in there. It's still there. And there was a collection of uh, holy Bibles, of course, made out of flammable materials, but they were all still there. In fact, they weren't even scorched. Fire Marshal says he has no explanation for it other than it was the hand of God. And of course it was the hand of God. God's trying to communicate to us in all ways, in every day, in every way, uh, that he is here for us, even in uh, what we perceive to be the worst of times. So really, It's a horrible thing to consider the burning of the cathedral at Notre Dame, but it started at Holy Week. And it's got people focused on things that matter. And that gives glory to God. And, and that's just a building. You know, it's going to be replaced. He who that building was dedicated to is far greater than that building itself. And hopefully in the rebuilding of this great place of worship, people, more people, and I'm convinced of it, are going to come become aware of God's existence, aware of his love for them, and they're going to find their salvation. This wouldn't have happened if, if, if that wasn't the case. So in all things, give praise. That's what I try to do. And uh, even though Monday I was in tears, by Tuesday, I uh, kind of saw what was happening. Now, um, back to a previous subject, and uh, it's something worth considering. Of course, I try to provide some entertainment with any of my live streams because certainly, as I've mentioned earlier, my friends are embarrassed for me anytime I try this because I'm not smooth at it. And I'm not all that good looking, and I'm not all that funny, and I'm not all that compelling. But here I am, engaged in professional development, and I'm all in your face on Facebook on a Thursday night when you've got nothing to do. But if anybody gets, uh, anybody out there gets squeamish about fake blood coming out of the face of a nice Jewish boy from New York City, born in Israel uh, and you know as Passover approaches and which is all about the blood 
then I've got something that else that you might consider. Yeah, if you could be offended at the fake blood that comes out of the face of Gene Simmons at a rock and roll concert, please also be equally offended about the real blood that came out of the Son of God. And you know why that blood was there? It's because we could not follow God's law. And there had to be atonement. And God found the only perfect sacrifice that there possibly could be. His only Son. Who He gave for us to die the most cruel death you can ever imagine because of the greatest love that there ever can be. So if you're appalled by the blood of Gene Simmons in a rock and roll concert, please also be even appalled to a greater degree of the reason it is that there was blood flowing down the face of Jesus Christ as he was crucified on his cross as an atonement for your sins. To all my Jewish friends, I wish a happy Passover. To all my Christian friends, have your minds on what really matters. Enjoy your family this weekend. Enjoy the fact that you have forgiveness. And because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Have a great weekend.